Hello all, we are here for the lesson number 5 of this AutoCAD 2016 training course and this lesson is called Cartesian and Polar Coordinates. Um, I'd like to make a, a very um, small preparation of, of the, the sheet and I will draw a rectangle uh, similar to what I've done in our previous lesson. So, function rectangle and I will choose this that I will explain right after. I'm just making definition of uh, A3 format, okay, and now at this moment I'm doing the zoom command through the keyboard, doing the Z to call the zoom, and now choose the all option to maximize the rectangle that uh, I had drawn before. Okay, so this is just to make you very clear about our uh, theme of the lesson, the coordinates. Okay. And this is this was done because I want to explain you the concept of the origin that uh, AutoCAD has by default, the world coordinate system, uh, which correspond to this that now is highlighted, this axis, the X and Y axis. We cannot see the Z because uh, in this moment we are working in 2D only, okay? So we will leave the 3D side of this for future lessons. So we can see these X and Y and we see a small square uh, in, in one, of these, uh, one of these points and this is, this small square is in what we call the zero zero of the of the system so this zero zero corresponds to x zero y zero okay for sure we will see uh, in future lessons how to make uh, user coordinate systems but for now i just want you to understand uh, this concept to explain how to specify coordinates and distance here. So, uh, to make a, a little resume of what, of what I said, I just draw this rectangle starting on the zero zero of the system and then I create the A3 format with this corner here. So, now uh, I want to show you how we can work with the coordinates. And to do that, basically, I must tell you that we have two possibilities to work. We have a coordinate uh, system that we call a Cartesian system, and we have another one that we call polar system, polar coordinate system. Let us start with the Cartesian, and the Cartesian uh, works with coordinates in X and Y. So let us try to create a line, okay, this is the symbol of, of the command, and you see that now AutoCAD is asking to specify a point, first point. I can do this by clicking on the screen, I will not do it now, and I can do this specifying coordinates. These two boxes that are near the cursor in my screen, the first box that now is uh, uh, the background in white corresponds to the X coordinate and the X will come always first. Okay. Uh, the second box, after I insert my first value, um, the system will highlight the second one to make insertion of 
the y coordinate. So basically now I will give a value that it can be anything. I will say, for example, 20. I will put um, a comma to split the x from the y. So now comma and the comma is the same that informing the system go to the y coordinate and now I will make for example 50 and what I'm saying I still did not make the enter to say do it but what I'm saying it is regarding the 0 0 of the system please go here in the x direction and count 20 so 20 around here and now go and count 50 in the y and count somewhere around here i don't know okay let us see what it will do enter okay it was a little <laughs> smaller than i thought but you can see that was 20 so it corresponds basically to two small two small squares 10 20 and 5 on the y direction okay and you you've seen that i just insert value for x comma value for y this is cartesian way and cartesian way has also two possibilities the absolute and uh, incremental ways the absolute is like i've done x comma y and it looks always to the zero zero as a reference if now at this moment that uh, the system is asking for a second point i want to do it uh, um, on an incremental way i have a, a slight different uh, a slight difference sorry my english sometimes is not the the best i hope you can understand it uh, but as i was saying i have a slight difference and before I insert the values X and Y, I must put the at symbol, the internet symbol that you know. So at, you see it uh, before the boxes. And now let us do it, for example, again, the same values, 20, 50. And I've done the exact same values with a slight difference to have the at symbol before and the the hat symbol wants to mean this is incremental so if it is incremental is not regarding the zero zero of the system but is regarding the last point given so now i'll do the enter and as you can see regarding the the first point you can see that i have two more squares I have 1, 2 and 5 to the y direction. So you see that um, this is the incremental way on the Cartesian coordinates. Okay. I can continue on this and now I can go to the polar system. And basically the polar system uh, has also two ways. The first one is the absolute way, always to the zero zero of the system and the incremental way, which in fact it is what we want to, to see because the concept is it's the same and no need to repeat here. So I will use the polar way incremental now. What it wants to mean again, it is it will not look to the zero zero, but it will look to this point. Uh, I've, ju I've just done and because it is incremental again I must insert the at symbol and now the polar way it is um, length of a vector and angle of a direction okay so length I will use for example a hundred okay and this is the length of the vector so it will basically from this point here it will count a hundred millimeters in this case or better a hundred units 
in any direction that I will define now with the angle. And uh, the angle, by default on the system, you can make definition of any other thing you like, but uh, usually all the, the softwares use this kind of terminology. Um, regarding the point that we are taking as a reference, uh, the zero angles is the right side, the horizontal right side, and the angles start to open against the, uh, the, the counter clock uh, on a watch. They go in this direction positive and they go negative in this direction. You can use either one of them, it's the same, it's just a, a question of understanding the angles you need. So, uh, 100 and to say now it is polar because uh, until now it is the same, I must use the sign that in, in math we use as the minus value. So minus, you see the symbol on the second box on the second box. And now I could use, you see that I'm moving my cursor. Uh, interactively the angles are moving. You see that here it is zero, you can see on the box. If I start to move up, the angles are positive. If I'm starting to move down, they are not, uh, you can use them negative, uh, minus one, two, three, and, 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 and so on, or using like, like this. So let us say, for example, 45 degrees, okay? And it is done. So I think it is quite easy to understand this, okay? Polar, it is the same, absolute or incremental, and for differencing them, just use the add symbol before. I can say that the incremental way, it's always what we want to use in either of the systems, but you get the notion of both, okay? So, very easy, this concept. Um, I will pass you uh, to our more um things here and the first very important it is when you are inserting the coordinates and i will try again to show you um for example let us put this um uh, cartesian way i can use i just use integer values but i can use uh decimal so in x 130.25 okay for going to the y so what you should notice here is the comma splits the x from the y the point splits the integer part from the decimal part of a number okay it is important to get notion of this um, the other thing i would like to show you it is the idea of the undo and the redo um, in here. We talked in our previous lesson the undo inside the line command, but you can see that we have these two small arrows that are the undo of a command. So I can make another line, okay, and I will make another line again, several lines, no very easy. And now if I go here on the undo, uh, what it will happen, it is, it will uh, go back one operation and the last operation, it is the execution of this line. So undo, and we have several things to make here, can make uh, several operations at once, let us to do this easy now, just one, okay? Uh, what happens, and the concept of the undo and the redo is connected, because if we go back one operation, because we might understood that 
this was done, uh, this was wrong. And uh, after we could realize that in fact it was not. So we can do the redo that uh, basically goes forward also uh, one operation. Okay. There is one interesting thing to notice also, which is um, one command that is called oops. And the oops basically will cancel uh, a delete of uh, the last entity or group of entities. So I will make the delete of this line here, which was the first one. And um, going through the concept of the undo to recover this line, uh, I may I may have to the undo several operations to, to recover it or to change it or whatever it is. But with the oops command that I can call basically like this, I've recovered the last deleted object. It's an easy way uh, to, to recover something that we've deleted. In this particular case, we are just working with these very basic uh, concepts, but uh, in, in work environment, we may delete something, we made several operations after, and uh, we may have the need to recover that deleted object without going back through the undo. That's the idea of the hoops. In fact, it's a very uh, good and very friendly um, command, but uh, so I think it's a very nice option. To finish this, I'd like to talk about the escape um, key in your keyboard. Because sometimes you have issues, you are in, in the middle of something, uh, you, you want to cancel uh, a command, we, you, you, you can do it uh, in several ways that you will notice uh, throughout this course. And sometimes you have dialog boxes open in your screen. And uh, the easiest way that will cancel everything immediately is going on the escape. You see that now I have this message, he's asking me for uh, a point. Uh, if I go on the escape key, click once and everything is cancelled immediate times, but I can assure you that is the easiest way to go and to make um, this prompt message without anything going on on the, on the program. So with these ideas, um, this lesson is finished. I hope to see you in our next one.